Hello everyone. I thought I would pop on and do a little watercolor tutorial. Um, tiny magical winged beings, dragonflies. And we're going to do this in a really simple way um, that anyone can do from brand new beginner to years and years of experience. We're not even going to look at a reference photo. These are going to be um, imaginary dragonflies in all our favorite colors. Um, super simple little tiny shapes that we stack one on top of the other that end up in a magical little painting. So um, these are the kinds of things I do in my dandelion lessons on, on my Patreon. Um, they're projects that are meant for the brand new beginner, but they're not like the typical misty pines that you see everywhere. You know, they're usually a little bit different. They're very simple and they're they're like jumping off points. So you learn how to do something one way and then you can take it in your own direction in any way that feels right to you. And that makes it authentic to you, right? So it's kind of fun that way. I don't give you um, paint by number sort of instructions. So we're gonna start this with a water soluble pencil. I have a Derwent Gravitint. This is in the color Storm. Um, it's just a soft, neutral color. You could use any watercolor pencil in any color you like. You could use water-soluble graphite. And honestly, you could even just use a pencil if you just drew very lightly, okay? Or, or a, just a regular colored pencil. And I'm going to start with just a little shape like this, okay? And then I'm going to put another shape underneath it so it's like a little U shape and then I put like a upside down gumdrop <laughs> shape and then I'm going to make maybe an oval and a narrower oval and a narrow and they just kind of stack like stacking cups and they get a little bit narrower each time until we've got one about that long so that's about the length of my pinky finger, give or take. Okay, just really, really simple. Then on this first um, sort of U shape, we're gonna just draw two little eyes sticking out at the side. Okay, so they're uh, they're also U shapes, and they just kind of stick out at the side like that. And then I'm gonna put little feet. So just just put out little feet like this. Okay, very, very simple. The next part is probably the scariest part if you're, if you're gonna feel scared about it, but really we're, we're just gonna start here, like where the gumdrop shape meets this first shape right in here. And I'm gonna sort of pull out, I'm gonna go really lightly to start all the way out like this. And I'm gonna kind of come around and bring it back. So it's like a big loop, right? It kind of comes out, it goes up a little bit, it curves around, it comes down, and then it slowly comes back up to me. So I'm gonna do it again on this side, same thing. And the reason that I get a little nervous about it sometimes is that I'm always afraid they're not gonna look the same. And what I've learned over time is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. So try to get them roughly the same shape and size, but it doesn't matter if they're not. And then I'm gonna come out and starting here, like where this dips in here, I'm gonna come out and make another one and I'm gonna bring it up. So I'm just sort of stacking two wings. And that's our dragonfly. That's all we have to do. All right? As far as drawing goes. <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna paint. And I have here a set. Uh, my paint sets always look messy because I use them. Um, this is my um, merry-go-round the flowery field set from Deep Deep Light. I did a little video about this not too long ago. Um, it is such a beautiful palette. And I love it because it has some really unusual mixes, but it also has the split primaries and they're very glowing. 
and that's what I need for this. So I'm gonna use this palette and I'm gonna use a small brush. This is like a, a number one brush. Everything here is very small. So if I went with a big brush, right, like a six or something, it would be too big for this space. So I'm using a small brush. This is a size one, a size two would probably work. All right. And I'm gonna start by thinking of a color to paint my dragonfly's body. And I think I'm gonna do like a blue. Um, it could be any color, right? I'm gonna do two blues and maybe a little bit of that pink. So I'm gonna start maybe in the center and put a little paint down and then move the paint around. And I might change the blue to a, to a different blue up here. And I don't mind, I'm gonna leave the eyes alone. I don't mind if these colors just sort of mix and mingle with one another. I'm just carefully gonna use blues and maybe change them a bit as I go. And just slowly paint the rest of the body. Very simple, right? Again, I'm going to leave the eyes for later and the, and the legs, so, but I painted the body. I might want to add a little bit of darkness in the body where things come together. So I could take another color in here, any color really. I'll take some of this one. This is called... Um, night raspberry. It's kind of a dark blue purple. And I'm going to put that some of that on my brush and every place these little shapes touch on the right side, I'm just going to touch a little bit of that color. And I'm going to rinse my brush and dry it off and just kind of dab it with water. So it mixes in a little bit. This is Canson XL paper. It dries really fast. Um, if it's, you know, some watercolor papers don't dry as quickly and you may not need to blend it like that. But by putting a little bit of dark in there, it just sort of enhances everything. All right, now we're gonna paint the wings. I am not worried at all that this might be still wet, okay? I'm gonna turn this this way because I like to turn my paper when I paint. And I'm going to start with a magical water glaze. I'm just gonna take clean water on my brush and I'm going to paint a glaze on this wing, this top wing, all the way to the edges I don't want any puddles of paint. I just want it to be pretty smooth. Like it was a sheet of ice. You could take a pair of skates and just glide right over it without any puddles. Then I'm going to take a magenta or, or some kind of clear color that I love. It could be anything. I'm gonna put a lot of water into it. I don't want it to be really dark. And I'm just going to touch my paintbrush with some of the magenta. And then I'm going to take some yellow. I just want to do red, yellow, and blue. And I'm going to touch, same thing, lots of water in it. And touch. I don't know why I've got a little bit of green on my... Touch a little bit of the yellow. And then I'm gonna take one of those blues that I used and touch some of the blue. And then I'm gonna take my brush with just water and I'm gonna drop water in just by touching my brush to the paper all around everywhere else. And let 
those colors just sort of magically move around like that. It, it almost has a tie-dye effect, right? I'm going to switch to the other side now. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now, you don't have to use magenta, yellow, and blue. You could use any color at all. But I kind of like that because it's like an iridescent rainbow. Putting my water glaze down on the wings. I always keep your brush on the inside. If you come outside and try to paint, you're, you're gonna drag your water outside of the lines or your paint outside of the lines for that matter. So stick, keep your brush inside pointed toward the edge. All right, I'm gonna come back here to my magenta. Drop that in to like the center here. Clean my brush. Pick up some of that yellow, drop that, Oop. clean my brush, and then pick up some of the blue. My brush seems to be cleaner on this side, that's okay. Rinse my brush and then just use clear water and drop it in here. And the nice thing is, is when you put that water glaze down, None of the paint or the water is going to flow outside those lines that you that you set. So you can just be free and make it pretty wet. Okay. Now here's the thing. If I start, that's pretty wet. Okay. If I came around and started to paint this one, chances are this paint would run over here. And I don't want that. I want these wings to be separate. So I'm going to give this a minute. All right, I'm gonna let this dry until I no longer see a shine on the paper. I see lots of shine right now. So I'm gonna turn my video off and then I'll come back when this layer has dried. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same things. And I'm gonna stay with the same color pattern, okay? If you wanted to, you could change it, but I'm gonna stick with the same. I'm gonna go right up there, put my water glaze on. By flooding it with water like that, it pushes the pigments around. It allows them to sort of mix and mingle and create that sort of tie-dyed effect. And it just makes them look very pale and luminous. All right, I'm gonna go back to my magenta. One in here. My yellow and blue. And then again, just clean water. Just drop it in. And the paints will move themselves, but if you feel like they're not moving to the edge, you can you can dry your brush off and then from the outside, sort of wick around the outside and that pulls the paint to the edge. It sort of wicks it to the edge. Okay. All right, I'm gonna to go to the other side now. Now you could stop at this point and then I'll show you once this dries how to put little markings on the wings. Or once it dries, you we can do some metallic work, which that's what I'm going to do. So we can make our butterfly wings iridescent, or I'm sorry, our dragonfly wings. It's funny, this um, paper, a lot of times when you put a water glaze down and drop paint in, the paint goes whoosh. This paper doesn't do that necessarily. It's interesting. The paint just kind of stays put. See that? 
That's okay, because we can flood the water. And then we've got our blue. Clean my brush, just clean water. Dropping it in, just kind of pushes the pigments around and floods the surface. I'm just going to still go over here and add a little bit more water. Okay. And then you can just make sure. Okay. All right. So while this is drying, <clears throat> we could work on the eyes. Um, if you are not going to use metallic paints, and by metallic paints, I mean paints with mica in them. And I'm actually going to wet these really quickly. So these are by um, a company called Lisi Linka. And they're just, they're, they're really special. Um, I love them. They're, they're probably the sparkliest paints I've ever used, but not everyone has these, and you don't need them to do this project. If you have other mic paints, use them. It, it just It's a lot of fun to see those wings become sort of iridescent. So I'm going to wet them. But any mica paints would be fine. However, if you don't have them or you don't like sparkles, all right, what you can do um, a couple things. You could use a pencil and use the pencil to make the eyes darker toward the bottom and then lighter toward the outside and make the legs a little bit darker. And then you could create the wing pattern. All right. So I'm going to show you over here the typical wing pattern that you could use and then draw another one, maybe starting about here. The center and then take a line and bring it down like this okay and then you can create more lines that kind of arc and follow one another and the same here you just bring one across like this and then bring them sort of down like this very very simple and then you can take more lines and just draw little squares inside if you want to depending on how much detail you want to add you could um, google the pattern of a dragonfly wing and you'll see that they're they've got tons of examples and this is simplified all right but you just keep it simple and create some patterns with a pencil. You could use colored graphite, you could use pen and ink, whatever you like. When mine dries, I'm going to use the sparkles um, because it makes it sort of luminescent, just like a dragonfly's wing. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll be back. Oh, let me show you the paintbrush I'll use. This is an Interlon 3-0 paintbrush, any kind of fine liner paintbrush like this. I also have this one, it's a 3-0. It's a little thicker though, this is a Da Vinci Cosmotop. It's a little bit thicker than this one. I really like this one. Um, I think if I have any other with me right here, I do not. You could also use a very fine um, brush in general. But I find that the shorter, like my number one or number zero, they don't hold as much paint. These liner brushes hold more paint. And so it just makes it easier to make long lines. All right, and I will show you more of that when I come back. Okay, so this is now dry. Looks like my cat ran across here. All right, um, now I'm going to add the sparkles, okay? So, less is more, all right, less is more for sure. Um, this set is called Once Upon a Time, 
it has really pretty colors for something like this. Um, I'm mostly going to use for the wings um, this color, which is sort of a silvery blue green. I honestly can't remember what it's called, but I don't have my color card here. So I'm getting the paint on my brush, but what I want to make sure is that my brush isn't holding like big drops of water or anything like that, and it's not like too loaded. So I just touch my brush to a tissue or something that I hold in my hand. And I'm going to start here and then try to keep my hands steady and light and just pull my brush along. Just naturally, it's going to start out a little bit thicker at the beginning and then get thinner toward the end, right? I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put a little bit more paint on my brush. Always just sort of make sure that there's not globs of paint on it. And I'm going to do the same here at this end. I'm just going to pull Okay, now I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the same on the other side. So if you, I don't know if you can see it, if you hold it up in the light, you're going to see it and it's just, it's really pretty. All right, so I'll start here. My my finger is basically touching the paper and I'm just sort of sliding my finger on the paper. And that way I maintain contact. If my hand's off the paper, I have a really hard time making that straight line. Um, you may also, <laughs> or you might not, but I do. And so that's why I maintain contact with the paper. All right. Now the cool thing is about the sparkle colors is that the more you change the colors up, the more fantastic it looks, right? So I'm gonna go to the inside of the wings now and I'm gonna use this color in the center. It's called Starlight and it's it's a holographic color. It's like a, a really pale gray and it looks just kind of gray until the light hits it. Um, and I'm gonna do the bottom part of the wing with starlight and then when I get over here I'm just gonna do little little dots of it not like a solid line but just kind of stipple till it meets the other one and I'm gonna do the same thing down here so you see it looks dark right um, but the magical part is is that when you see it in the light it just becomes this beautiful prism of color. And I guess what I'm saying, you can't see that on camera. I can see it here when the light hits it. But when I take a picture of it for you, I'll make sure that I try to capture the right light on it. And I'm moving my hand on the paper. Okay. So now I'm looking at it in the light just to see where I've taken it. Yeah, it's really pretty. Okay. All right, so next I'm going to start on the inside of the wings. And I'm going to use a mix. Um, I'm going to use this pink. Um, this sort of purplish color and this blue and I'm going to start I'm actually here I'm going to use this and I'm going to dilute this a little bit with water I want it to be really really light 
So whatever paint you're using, just make sure it's really light and fluid. And I'm gonna do the same thing I showed you if you were doing it with pencil. I'm gonna draw a line here, right? And then draw one down. And I'm going to add a little bit of this color. So I'm using my brush just like a pencil. And then I'm gonna add one more color, this blue. Okay, now I can choose to put all the tiny little marks in or not, right? And if I hold it up, I start to see the sparkles. I am gonna put some of those little marks in. I'm gonna use this one again. Oh. Just wanna always make sure I don't have water on my brush or too much paint. And I'm just going to make little tick marks. And then just grab some of these other colors. And just enjoy it. In person, it's so enjoyable because you see all the sparkles as you're doing it. It's probably hard to see that on the on the screen. So pretty. All right, then I'm gonna do the wing underneath. Same kind of thing, right? I'm gonna start with one color. And I can't see what's under there, so I'm just gonna start here and know that I wanna take it like that, and then that one comes down this way. And then they start filling in. And then you can start filling those in too. And I'm doing this very light, lightly with a light hand. Oh, 
if you ever put on too much, I just take a tissue and dab it and it comes right up. I'm not, I'm trying to have a very light hand. And the beauty of it is then from, from like just looking at it from this perspective, it just looks like beautiful little details. But as you see it in the light, it starts to really sparkle. Okay. All right, so those two are done. Beautiful. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do this side. I'm gonna turn off the camera and just do a little time lapse. Okay, one final thing. <clears throat> We're going to take this purple and mix it with blue. So some kind of color that you want for your dragonfly body, all right? And I'm just gonna use little dots and fill in the right side and the center of each section. two little tails at the bottom. Then I happen to have a black. And I'm going to use a black glitter for the eyes. If you don't have black mica or you don't want to use it, you could use a black pen or like what I talked about before, a pencil. And I am going to do the little feet in black sparkle. very light touch with these brushes and you get a pretty fine line. And then the, the eyes. I'm going to dot it in, just leaving a little bit of light in there. A little bit of area where it's not painted. Like that. And then I can take a tiny bit of the black and just touch it in the middle here.
there. Now, I also want to add a little bit of shimmer. I'm gonna take some of that purple that I mixed with the blue and really, really make it dilute on my brush. And I'm just gonna drop it in here to the inside of the wings on both sides, just to give it a little bit of darkness there where the wings meet the body and they overlap one another. And a little extra shimmer. Rinse my brush really well, dry it off, and just kind of soften, soften that out a little bit. Oops. And then one final thing that I think would be really fun is I have some gold sparkle. Any gold mica is fine, right? I just happen to have these and I love them. So I'm gonna take some gold And every now and then, I'm gonna paint one of these little squares in. Just here and there. Maybe two on each wing. Really randomly. Maybe three on the top wing. just for fun. And sometimes you'll find a dragonfly that has that, that just has a couple of those little squares in this wing pattern that are different than everything else. And it's so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my number one brush now, or some kind of brush that's a little bit bigger. And I'm actually gonna take Starlight, this, this middle like holographic color, but you could take any color. I'm gonna mix it in with some water so it's nice and fluid. And I'm gonna give him some sparkles. And when those dry, they should be quite, quite sparkly. Oh yeah, oh, it's so pretty. So I will take a good picture of this so you can see the sparkles in it, which you probably can't see um, on a video. But I hope you enjoyed this. And I and I really, um, I hope you'll join me on Patreon sometime. We do uh, one or two projects like this a week. Um, it's $5 a month, and you also get a back catalog of over 500 lessons in total. There's other tiers. There's a $10 a month tier where you get an extra lesson, which is more advanced. But a lot of my lessons are perfect for brand new beginners, and we do some really beautiful things. So I hope um, I hope you'll join us. There's a link um, in, in the description box to my Patreon, so you can check it out yourself and see all the things that I offer. And yeah. All right, everyone. Oh, and if you like deep, deep light watercolors and you would like to buy some, I have a discount code um, in my description box also. And if you're a patron, you get a special discount, which is really nice. All right. Thank you so much. And I will see you again soon. Take care.